one of the things that surprised me, Joel, was like, wait a minute, I'm used to having to measure HRV over the course of a night. What is the difference between what my aura ring used to tell me by measuring over eight hours of sleep versus this thing that's telling me in two and a half minutes in the morning before I've got up? Like, how do you think about that? Yeah, this is, I think this is, this is probably the most important part of HRV because there is so much confusion on this. We look back historically at all the data that's been used, these all cause mortality studies and all the different pieces of literature out there, 95 percent of them are from spot HRV measurements that we are measuring at a specific time and you're doing this in standardized conditions as much as you can to get a baseline because we want to know where is your autonomic nervous system right same now, time every same time. time every day in the same conditions because what I want to know is last you know 24 hours you did something yesterday you did lots of things I assume you ate food you maybe worked out you maybe had alcohol or maybe you didn't you did mental stress or maybe you didn't you put your body in a situation where it had to respond for, for the majority of the day to do something, and then you went to bed. And we want to see the result of that. We want to see this stress and recovery cycle that you went through yesterday because that tells us where your body is at right now. How is it responding? Because we'll look at changes over time and understand how your body is, is adapting to the world around you. And that's what most HRV has been built on is we measure in standard conditions, we see where you're at today, and that informs us about what happened over the last 24 hours and, and maybe slightly beyond. And the analogy is if I was going to weigh myself, I'd want to weigh myself first time in the first thing in the morning in standard conditions. I wouldn't want to have a meal and then go weigh myself. I'd want to have very standard ways of measuring so I can see the changes because ultimately it's you changing against yourself that's the most informative. So we wake up, we measure HRV, we see where you are and we see where you were, what your averages have been, what your variations have been. And that tells us where you are today. And that helps us make a decision about what are you ready to do right now? Or what's the most appropriate for you to do right now? The one thing I'll say is if your HRV is high or low, we can talk about what those mean. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't train hard. It just might mean that like that might not be the most beneficial thing for you. And there might be a cost associated with that. If I wake up, my HRV is way outside of normal. You can't say, oh, I can't work out today. You can, you can. it's just a question of, is that what your body needs? Um, but anyway, if you sleep. Yeah, to be clear, I don't think I've, I mean, I don't think. Yeah. I have never once not exercised as a result yeah, exactly. of what that said. And there have been days when I've had abysmal scores. Um, and it's told me, like my rate of what it, my heart rate range on what it has told me is never above about 141. There have been days it's been as low as 121, which for me means like my recovery was 35 or 40 percent. That's a night when I didn't sleep sure. and something was dramatically off. You'd still do the workout. You still the workout, right? Yeah. You just are aware of what the cost of that workout would be. You might make adjustments tomorrow yeah. or to your plan. Um, so anyway, now that's what we're getting when we're measuring at the end of sleep, right? The morning time we're seeing what was the result of our sleep, what was the result of our workout. So yesterday, everything else we did. If we're measuring HRV overnight. HRV number one is always higher at night because the parasympathetic system is that dial is already turned up mm -hmm. quite a bit because you're sleeping where it's the highest. Although for most people, Joel, they will see the reverse because like my RMSSD HRV overnight is lower than the uh, log normal transform I get out of Morpheus. Yeah, because Morpheus, if you look at the actual RMSSD data, you would see yeah. that you'd be higher at night. Now, Morpheus is, diff is different. And can obviously. we see that in the app? Can we? You we can't right now. We've uh, honestly when we first came out with BioForce and Morpheus, there weren't so many other apps to compare against. So it wasn't yeah. as big a deal to not show the raw number. Um, so we chose not to, but now I think we probably will just because people do want to compare. Um, but anyway, overnight that dial of that parasympathetic system was already higher. Mm -hmm. So we're getting less of a responsiveness to see what actually is changing at rest. Yep. We're not measuring at rest. The second thing is if you have arrhythmias, if you're an athlete who has very high HRV, you don't have as much variability. We're not really gauging the true responsiveness of the 24 hours before we're measuring more of what's it doing during the recovery during the recovery period which you know has some correlation obviously but we're not really seeing where are you at the end of that recovery period where are you ready to go today for this you know next period of stress and if you do here's the other biggest thing is if you do something if you do a workout in the evening if you have a few glasses of wine if you're doing something very mentally challenging the first part of your sleep you're just responding to that and so your HRV is not reflective of this whole process. It's just reflective of, hey, you just did an evening workout and your HRV is still suppressed for the first half of your sleep responding to that workout. Yeah. So we don't get a true picture of where am I at right now and how does that correlate to what I should be doing for the next 
you know, 12 to 18 hours as I'm awake across the, the next day. So I think we're just, we're probably getting a much better gauge of sleep and how our body responding during sleep, but we're not really getting this true picture of how did our body go through the whole process of life, sleep, recover, next. We don't see that picture as well because we're not measuring at the end of sleep, we're getting this average across it. So I don't think it's telling us really the same thing and it doesn't have the same utility for telling us from a workout perspective, what's the most appropriate thing for us to do. Uh, might be a silly question, but it occurred to me now as we were talking about this, the one fundamental difference from one day to another in that morning check for me is there are some mornings I wake up and I have to pee so badly. And there are some mornings when I don't. And there's a part of me that's wondering as I'm laying there doing my test while needing to pee, is that putting a little more sympathetic tone into this? Am I getting a skewed measurement? Would I be better off going, peeing, coming back, waiting a few minutes? I'd go to the bathroom, get up. Okay. And there's not, it's not that bad of a big of an issue if you just go up, go to the bathroom, you come back and you reestablish. And part of that's actually measuring how well can you reestablish that. If, okay. that. if that significantly impacted your HRV, it probably was on the lower end to begin with. Um, but it does bring up a point I, I should mention. People with really high HRVs, and I, I don't think this becomes an issue, at least in more people until you're in the 90s or resting heart rates in the low to mid 40s, your, your HRV is already very, very high that laying down, you're taking some of the responsiveness away. And if you start getting to those categories, you probably want to take it seated. The challenge for most people seated, they get antsy, they move around, you introduce more motion artifacts, mm -hmm. and it becomes more difficult. But we really want to have as much range that dial available as possible because we want to see how the nervous system is turning that dial. And so if you're Got very it. high, like I said, I would say someone who's resting heart rates. Yeah, I'm you know, never above, I'm in the, the low 80s is as high as I get. Yeah, I think at that point, laying down is still a good way to take okay. it. But if you get up in the 90s, mid 90s, you really want to maximize that potential responsiveness. And that's where a seated measurement makes more sense. But that's a fairly small percentage of the population that's going to be, you know, up in that range. As RMSD, you're talking 120s, 130s, 150. When you get up in those ranges, you probably want to take it seated. You also would say you, what's the, when I bought the Morpheus a couple of years ago, you had an armband and a chest strap that came with it. So I still use the armband as my morning check because I can, I just, that way I don't have to move them back and forth. Yeah. It always sits right there. And then I use my chest strap when I'm exercising. You've gone to just a chest strap. Is that because you think you're going to get better data and it's just better to have people using the chest strap for both? And should I do the same? I mean, it's two things. I don't think the data, as long as you're measuring, you know, consistently and you have the chest, or you have the armband placed correctly. And that's not any less accurate. I okay. don't think the problem we ran into is people, as you know, are trying to use our armband to train because it's more convenient. Like, oh, the armband is, it goes to my wrist and their workout data was, was just not as accurate. The second thing is it looked like a watch, but it wasn't a watch. And so we had a bunch of confusion with people, people just putting it on their wrist, people putting their wrist and not sure what to do with it. It just created a lot of confusion. So at the end of the day, I said, look, the chest strap is giving us the best unambiguous, data. Unambiguous, yeah, as yeah. much as it's unambiguous. If people really want to wear an arm vice device because they just don't want to put the chest strap on, we work with the Rhythm, the Scotch Rhythm 24, because it uses the exact same sensor that Morpheus uh, used in our, our original armband that you have. And so if they want to do that, they can they can measure it that way. But from an yeah. accuracy perspective, from both the HRV and the workout, it just made sense for us to standardize that use the chest strap and make it as, as universal as possible rather than try and sell two devices, which people were ultimately somewhat unsure of.